Hi everyone, I'm Lucy Packham and I'm a sustainability officer based in Wrightship's Melbourne office. And in this demo, I'll provide you with an overview of how the GHG rating works in Wrightship's new online platform. So once you've signed into the platform using your existing Wrightship login, you can search for a vessel to view the GHG rating or verify the GHG rating or any energy saving equipment of the vessels that you operate. You can see the GHG rating on the vessel's overview page, which provides a snapshot of the vessel's rating, the range of vessels it is compared against in the peer group, as well as any energy saving equipment applied. So for a more in-depth look, you can click across to the GHG rating tab. So in the GHG rating tab, you will see the summary page outlining all of the elements that go into the GHG rating, plus an explanation about each data output. So these inputs include the GHG rating, which indicates where the vessel sits on a scale of A to G, with A being the most efficient. The EVDI, which represents grams of CO2 per tonne nautical mile. And it's the figure that's used to compare vessels of a similar size and type. The verification status. So a verified GHG rating is based on vessel specific inputs used to determine the EVDI, whereas an unverified rating is based on vessel specific IHS inputs, IMO assumptions and sister ship data. So it therefore provides an indication of vessel performance. So all ship owners have the ability to submit documentation to confirm the inputs used in the EVDI equation and to verify their vessel's GHG rating. The next input is the size score. So the peer group data that a vessel is compared against is normalized into a bell curve. The size score shows where a vessel sits within the rating band. In this example, the vessel has a size score of 2.43, which means that it's A rated because it has a size score between plus two and plus three. The size score is dynamic and it changes as the peer group changes. The next section outlines the specifics of this vessel's peer group. So all vessels are compared to other vessels of the same size and type, um, and that makes up the peer group. In this case, we have a bulk carrier that's cape sized, and so it's compared to other vessels plus or minus 10% of its bed weight. So the summary page also outlines any energy saving equipment that's been applied to the vessel. And if this vessel were to have had any energy saving equipment, it would also you signify with a plus symbol next to the rating. So while the summary page is helpful to familiarise yourself with the GHG rating and the various inputs, the GHG rating factors page digs down into the detail into what makes up the EVDI. So it provides a list of potential factors that go into the equation, such as dead weight, uh, main engine size, specific fuel consumption, for example. It has multiple columns, um, which provides the value that's being used, so effective value um, in the equation, the source data, and the date that it was last updated. So if you're a ship owner, this is a really useful tab so that you can, one, check that inputs are correct, two, see what needs to be updated, and three, have insight into what goes into the equation. So if a data point does need updating, that's when you can work with our team to process a verification. So the next tab is the GHG rating peer group tab. So the graph on the GHG rating peer group depicts all other vessels that are being compared to determine the GHG rating. So the Y axis shows the EVDI, which is grams of CO2 per tonne nautical mile, and the X axis is the dead weight. So each dot here represents a vessel in the peer group and their position in relation to the IMO's EEDI reference line. You can see that we can change the reference line to meet the different phases for some context and the entire peer group of the vessel is included in the graph. So in this instance, we have a cape size bulker and what's shown here is vessels within the peer group range. So other bulk carriers that are within plus or minus 10% of their dead weight. So it gives vessel owners a direct insight into where they sit in relation to those vessels of the same size and type. So the dot for the vessel in question, so the Fumberger here, which is a demonstration vessel we're using, is highlighted so you can see where it sits in relation to the fleet. The vessels are coloured according to their GHG rating. And you can see from this that beating the reference line of various phases doesn't necessarily guarantee you um, a positive rating. What the GHG rating aims to do is highlight 
and showcase those that go above and beyond the regulation to enhance their vessels efficiency. So it allows for individual benchmarking to provide um, insight into what is required of a ship of your size and type to achieve a higher rating. And we often get questions from ship owners about how it's possible that they've beaten the, the reference line and yet they're still rated D or below. And it, it obviously varies depending on which segment we're looking at. But we hope this graphic can help to put their vessel's performance in relation to their peers in perspective. And it will also help to inform where they need to be to move to the next rating dent. So we anticipate that this graph will be able to assist with the vessel upgrade process. So another common question we get from ship owners is regarding fleet performance in comparison to their competitors. So to help address these questions, we've created the GHG performance tab under the, um, a company search. So if you search for your, for your company and click on the GHG performance tab, it'll take you to this, this view. So here a vessel owner can compare the GHG rating spread of their fleet in comparison to other vessels of the same ship type. So the verification statuses of the fleet are displayed and it also shows the ship owner where they might have an opportunity to improve vessel ratings through verification. So that's displayed over here. You can see that this vessel owner, 94% of their fleet are verified um, and there's only a small number that are unverified. So if they wanted to target a segment for improvement of the ratings, they would look to verify these 5% of vessels. It shows the fleet broken down into vessel types and here it looks like they've just got 35 bulk carriers and you can scroll down to look through some of the vessels on an individual basis where you can sort by the GHG rating and you can sort of highlight those vessels that are high performers or those that could benefit from an upgrade. If you own or manage vessels, you can request a GHG verification to update the GHG rating data relating to your vessels. So to request a GHG verification, you navigate to the vessel overview page and then you select the request a GHG verification button. The email address for correspondence defaults to the user's name. However, you can feel free to add other email addresses that you would like to keep informed how the verification is progressing. You can then choose to verify the GHG rating inputs by selecting GHG rating or you can add any items of energy saving equipment that have been installed on the vessel by clicking energy saving equipment. If you want to verify both, you can select both. So to request a GHG verification, we'll start with that. You need to start by indicating whether you have an EEDI or EVDI technical file, which includes all of the different data inputs for the vessel. You'd have an EEDI technical file if your vessel was built after 2013 and it qualified for a predetermined EEDI, and hence you'll have that EEDI technical file. In that case, you'd select yes or vessels who have had their EVDI calculated by class or another reputable third party will also select yes. So you'll be then asked to enter the data inputs in the form, providing information about the vessel's parameters. So we've got basic engine information, capacity and dimensions, as well as vessel speed. You'll then enter the final EVDI or EEDI figure and upload a copy of the EDI technical file to finalise the process. So the next section is the energy saving equipment. And then to request a verification of energy saving equipment installed, you need to fill out this form with all of the relevant details. So first you select a category, the equipment type, and then the date of implementation. If you've had more than one item of energy saving equipment installed, you can add to the verification request. So you can add multiple items if you would like. In this example, we will do propulsion, a duct or nozzle, and it was installed just recently. For our team to verify this request, we'll it'll need to have at least one document from class confirming that it's been installed. And further to that, if the equipment can improve the vessel's GHG rating, you'll need to provide rightship with documents that quantify the improvement and a newly calculated EVDI that incorporates the benefit. So we'll shortly view the How Can I Improve tab, which provides guidance on what energy saving equipment will result in a benefit. So you upload those documents here, add any additional comments that you would like and press submit. You'll then receive confirmation that the request has been submitted. 
Rightship will also update you via email and indicate on the vessel overview page when the status of the request changes. So if our team needs more data to process your verification request, you'll receive a request for information via email, which we suggest you respond to as quickly as possible to fast track the verification process. In terms of how you can improve your rating, we have the how I can improve tab here which provides guidance on the steps the ship owner or manager should take to improve their vessel's GHG rating. The first of which is to verify the vessel's GHG rating, then consult with class or another appropriate third party for improvement options that are appropriate to your vessel. Such an improvement could be related to the speed of the vessel, the fuel consumption rate, or changing the basic dimensions of the vessel. Once you've decided on a method that will be best for your vessel, we're happy to provide you with a pre-assessment of the impact this will have on your vessel's GHG rating. And this page also provides a graphic that depicts the most common energy saving equipment options registered in our system, just to help guide that process a little bit more.